a new tournament begins at races and fun and boy are we all excited to see what they've come up with this time hey everybody i'm brendan 64 sports and street cars on the races and fun channel and on that diecast racing tv channel another 64 fantasy cars same idea here two parallel tournaments going on check out the other channel diecast racing tv to see the other side of it and they'll converge at the end of it all top four from each we got our first set of four here and we'll get our first look at the track you can see a few chicanes to wiggle through and then into two big turns back to the spirals we haven't seen them in a while they'll come down a hill and all converge and that's where the action will be already an early roadblock spinning out and that will be a honda win and you'll see that it will be a late race action kind of tournament. We'll start out mellow, hit those curves, and then come down all together in that convergent space. And, uh, well, chaos from there for sure. Here we go. Sending the next heat out there for the same cars just switching up the lane. Wiggling through those sidewinding turns. Um, someone have an official term for those. I'd love to hear it. I'm not, I think chicanes, but maybe that it might be a little off there. It, there comes the Mustang. He's going to win this one. Oh, almost! I was going to say easily. He almost got overtaken by the NASCAR who only needed to find that outside line. Look at this replay. He dives inside with the Mustang, and it's a mistake. Dives away too late. And that's going to be a five for the Mustang. He'll hold on with that. But the, uh, the little wiggles there. I think it's back and forth about twice total, maybe three times. What what official term really goes with that? Because you can often see that in more um, larger racing. Um, I think chicanes is the best I've got for now. Here we go. Sending the four out here for heat three. Or, 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 race three of the heat. Here comes the Mustang converging well. Collision. Easy overtake. Honda drops back and, well, he's, he's still looking good to advance right now, but needs to uh, brush up on that defensive driving. He needed to be strong there. The idea there was a nose block for the Honda. Since uh, in, in the foot race and the side, uh, sideways collision, he doesn't really have the strength for it. See if he can find it here. Honda on the near side. He's down a few points on the Mustang looking to overtake. Other two cars is looking if they can advance here, but they need to get out in front. Honda with the lead right now. Mustang in last place. NASCAR, can he come back again? No, it's an open lane to the end in the Honda. Mustang, I think, will barely advance here because he built up that buffer of points early on. Already starting in a way where uh, in no respect are there any... Uh, uh, full sweep opportunities. There's the next set of four. And so I think we're looking at a completely different type of tournament. Here. On the far side, Elucid Air with a Nissan. On the near side, Corvette and Toyota through the chicanes. Now the first spiral and one more. It looks like Toyota has a lead on the far side. Still some cars in contention. They're about tied. Here comes the Lucid Air. Big move through the convergent space. And the Nissan, he'll come through in third, and at least pick up two points. Toyota, very fast there, kind of establishes he'll be a problem for these other racers in this one. Heat two. Toyota, lane two. Nissan, loose air, split now on the far sides. The far and near side, but depends on where you sit from. Here we go, Toyota falling behind to the turns here. It looks like even though he had inside lines through the spiral, he lost some ground. Here comes the Nissan, convergent nose block on Lucid Air. Toyota will pick up three. In the convergent space, you see that? Wonderful nose block, that's what the Honda needed to do in the previous heat. Puts it on early, really starts it as they were transitioning from uh, that larger space into the I guess it's about two, three cars wide. I think about three. But that larger space, that larger funnel, is, uh, is like about eight cars wide. In there, so. Really the time you want to use lateral movement if you have the chance. Here we go. Sending Toyota out. They're on the, on the far side there. Oh, had the lead. Now Lucid Air takes it back over. Oh, slides right into the far side. 
and he's going to slot to the win. And he'll end up on top of the Toyota at the end of it all. And it looks like Toyota and Lucid Air are your uh, top competitors in this one. Nissan Corvette, I think, still with a chance. Corvette, I think, is out of it. But uh, Nissan, I mean, look at that, three ones. We're going to have a full individual anti-sweep, or whatever you want to call it. Full individual failure. <laughs> Nissan's still within it, though, if he can win this one. He might be able to. Looks like he had a lead for a second, lost it, wiggles out of the turns, losing speed, loose in air, cutting back inside, trying to catch up the Toyota, who spins out, but still gets a backwards finish. 5-3-3-5 for Toyota. Lucid Air coming up just behind. I think he had 1-5 or 2. He had 1. Nissan also had 1, but he'll advance. Running to the finals. Lucid Air, Toyota. Who from the first heat? Mustang and Honda Civic. Let's run them out. Mustang on the near side. They throw Honda there on the far side, but in the inner lane. Toyota looking fast through here through the chicanes. Lucid Air keeping pace. Down the curves they go. In and out. It looks like Lucid Air came out the better of all the vehicles. Mustang speeding up here through the convergence space. Has some room on the far side but can't speed up. No acceleration down the back straight. Had velocity but not any increase. Lucid Air is going to be left a length ahead. He'll start with five here. Toyota, unfortunately and surprisingly, left quite far behind. I mean, based on the the lanes here, it seems like it's very difficult for any one car to dominate in all four lane spots. We're trying to get a closer look at here what's going on. So Toyota, follow him. He gets an inside on the first turn. And it, see, it goes out away on the next one. So they do switch up how each of the spirals curve down. Lucid Air coming fast with this one. Toyota, at least in second. Mustang blocks out Honda for seemingly no reason. Who's going to cross? Mustang curves in front of Honda. Keeps him right from the finish line. Um, kind of a Lord of the Flies situation. Only battling through two or one points. But still, uh, every point counts. Only two ones for Honda. But look at that. Take note of that. Um, as each car descends their uh, respective spirals, they're going to have one turn that's in, on the inside and then one that's on the outside. It kind of keeps it fair, but it, uh, it's for you to determine whether starting on that outside turn and ending with an inside one is better or starting inner and then ending outside is better. I would think that starting outside and going in is faster, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Toyota falling behind Lucid Air, another five, and we're looking at a possible finals sweep. Deep breath on this one as we head to the final round. Is anyone still have a chance? Lucid Air, I mean, 15 points. Yeah, I don't think anyone's got a chance. Lucid Air really has got it. The only thing he's looking for is that full sweep in the finals. Not an individual sweep on the video, but for the finals, that four race five always feels good. Slow through that final turn. He's still got a chance, though, if he can pull ahead of Toyota. Big difference in gap. Lucid Air will not get there, and there will be no sweeps of any kind in this video. Uh, as I said before, a different kind of tournament. Lucid Air, though, the best of all with points. He'll be moving on to those finals way far down the road. And so get excited for those as we have to fill eight spots, and of that, we have filled one. Check out Diecast Racing TV as well for the side parallel content with this tournament. And uh, we will see you next time on Races and... A new group of street and sport cars to take to the double spiral track today. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan and I am thankful to some of the uh, viewers in the previous comments of the previous video who helped me out with the terminology regarding those chicanes as I called them. Some people volunteered the words S's, um, even uh, 
S curves, whatever you want to call it. Looks like S's is kind of the, the overarching name that people have been uh, advocating for. So through the S's there, a couple back and forth turns. And we'll get our first four out there. Aston Martin looking to take an early lead down to the convergence space and comes across Jaguar right behind. Ooh, almost caught it there up at the end. Um, a lot of chance for acceleration down the transition, it seems. We saw this last video as well. Just, just time where the car really sped up over those last few lengths. And we'll mix them up again and go for heat two. And uh, they'll take to the yeses here. Pontiac here on the near side with a lead this time. Remember the spirals, one outer spiral, one inner for each car every time. That's how it's been structured. No matter what lane you're in, you're dealing with it. Oh, a little bit of a skid on all three of those vehicles. The Aston Martin, big nose block, and he keeps back that white car. What a wonderful finish. Look at him. He wouldn't give up on the nose block. That's the kind of determination you have to have. And I know it's only one point, but that could keep you in the game. You only need to be top two to advance. Aston Martin still holding on. Mazda there, that white car that was that suffered at the end. And it looks like Pontiac and Jaguar tied at six points for second. They're back in as well. Aston Martin almost flips off the track there through the S's. Here they go around the curves. Here comes the Pontiac with a lead. Aston Martin speeding up on the near side and through the convergence space. Takes back the lead and pushes across the line way ahead. What a move on the outer line. And I will say in that transition piece, the outer line might be better because you can ride that rail in any, any side... Uh, any sidelong battles, you're going to push the other car into the middle and start to turn them. So you got to take advantage of the outer line when you can. Inner lines, they need to jump into the middle of the transition and dive to the middle. Not try to ride that rail because that's going to, you know, again, in a sideways battle, that's going to leave them uh, out of control. Here comes the Jaguar. On the near side, Aston Martin again, looking to speed up. Ooh, takes the behind line, goes skids. He's now 90 degrees, but he's back straight he'll lose a, a place again and now um well I, th I think he'll still advance because he had two fives in it it's another win there from the jaguar well one win and advances aston martin and the jaguar pontiac will not will come up short here he also had a win but uh not enough next set of four here we go lotus charger camaro camaro Audi. Uh -huh. I saw another comment recently telling me I was pronouncing that wrong. Either Camaro, Camaro. I'm doing it wrong. So <laughs> I'll try to stick with one and do my best. Here it comes. We have the Charger there ahead by many lengths of finish. Oh, wow. Big race at the end. Ooh, I almost missed that. My brain tends to uh, let up a bit on the gas when we get down to just the two and one point races because, I mean, truthfully, it's really about the fives and the threes, but the, the Camaro really pushed across nicely there. And uh, one by a wheel length. Well, got third by a wheel length. Let's roll them out again. Here we go. Heat two. Looks like Charger and Audi will be the ones to beat in this one. Charger there on the inner line of the far side. Through the S's, takes back a lead. Wow, fast through those S's. Look at how smooth that was. That gives him an advantage. Coming out here. Now neck and neck with the Audi. He's got an inner line Audi on the outer line and converges in. Big lead for the Audi, and he'll pick up five this time. Charger slows down and almost loses out to the Lotus, but uh, has enough room to finish things off. And uh, the standings will shake up just a little bit. 3-5-5-3. Three, five, five, three. Charger and Audi are tied. 2-1 and 1-2. So far, again, no individual sweep being set up in this one. We did at last time have a final sweep, which is lesser because it's only four of the eight races won in a row. But no, no chance for that individual sweep today as, a, well, every single car, well, has not gotten first in at least one race so far. Here comes the Audi down to the finish line and he'll have a few lengths to spare. And uh, it looks like the Charger and the Audi will be looking for the advancing spots. I don't even know if the if any of these other cars can get back into it. Camaro there with five points. And I believe, yeah, 533. So there's no chance. It's the Charger and the Audi for sure. 
And I guess it'll be a battle of, uh, a battle for the glory then. Who will win this one? They're always competitive, even when they know they've got the overall win. Here comes the Audi. Uh, looking a little shy there. Two lengths behind and more convergence space. Oh, Charger slows down. He's almost knocked away there. The Audi had a line, but couldn't hold control. And they fell behind the Camaro there. Who, uh, who eked out a few extra points, but either way, advancing Audi, advancing Charger. We head to the finals. And it's our set of four. Charger, Jaguar, Aston Martin, and Audi. Jaguar on the far side, then Aston Martin, then Charger, then Audi all the way here on the near side. It's a line of four. They're all pretty close. Through the S's, how does it look? Audi falling behind through the S's. Charger looking like he lost out speed in the double spiral. Here comes the Audi on the near side. Aston Martin, big lead. Audi catching up, but he doesn't go for an outer line. He needed to push away nearby and find that open space. He had the speed and just didn't have the dexterity. Aston Martin, five, Audi, three. And uh, the other two following behind. Let's roll him out again. Eyes on the Aston Martin. Looking for a final sweep if he can get it. Through the S's. Audi looking fast and even into that double spiral. Looks like he had an edge of speed but comes out a little bit slower. Maybe the Jaguar this time. Stretching out a big lead here into the conversion space. Big collision. Audi loses all the speed almost down to fourth place. Jaguar will take that one. Oh man, what a collision. They came down at the same time and changed direction. And the Aston Martin bounced off much better. Next set. The next heat here. Same set of four. Now it's Aston Martin on the near side. Audi in the middle there. Far lane near um, inner line, we'll say. Uh, five and three for the Aston Martin, so he's really in the lead here with eight, but it's still anyone's match. Here we go. Running down to the end, Aston Martin. Big lead. Well, just by a length. He's still a chance to lose. <coughs> starts to, man, <laughs> cough right through that, but starts to turn around. And he's going to reverse nose block. I don't even know how to make sense of that. Is that a reverse nose block? A backwards nose block? It's not even a nose block. It's a rear block. But he'll get that on. And he did uh, such amazing things that I, I choked up right there. <laughs> Aston Martin 535. 531 for the Jaguar. It's still possible for either of them. Here they go. Jaguar needs a win, though, and the Aston Martin's got to lose. Jaguar coming out quite fast. He's got a smidge of a lead. Here comes the Charger converging, and he's got it. Jaguar tries to put a little block on. He's nudged forward. Audi nudges forward the Aston Martin, and that's going to leave victory in the hands of the Aston Martin. Charger did not have enough to make any difference with that five. And the winner will be the Aston Martin heading to the finals. Now we have two cars heading to the finals. No sweeps of any kind in this one. That'll do it. Competition continues to heat up as we head to the third group stage of the Double Spiral Tournament. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and let's get it going. You can see the contestants all in line here as we head to day three. And you know how it goes. Best one from today is going to move on to those finals. And we got two heats of four, or two, really two sets of four. Within that, of course, the four heats. And then the finals following that as well. Oh, my God. Looks like that green vehicle there. The Mercury almost flipped out of the S's. He's going to still hold a lead, though, down through the Lotus. Right behind, but losing ground. And they converge, and McLaren will... Oh, almost pushed past. The Lotus is going to put on that wonderful nose block. I mean, absolutely smart play right there. Look at the Lotus. Had an outside line. Needed to block out the McLaren. The only shot he had, of course, was the nose block. Mercury with five. You might wonder why the nose block is the only really good move there, and that's because, well, McLaren clearly had more speed. 
down that back straight in the foot race. McLaren had the speed. McLaren had the acceleration. So the only option was defensive driving. And because Lotus was still in front at the point, that was open for him to put on the nose block if he saw it, and he did. Lotus, Mercury, oh, pushes past, and he's speedy to the finish line. He almost took half the momentum from the Lotus as well. Lotus really died right there, almost lost out again to the McLaren, who couldn't uh, find the right line there, ended up behind. And we have an even spread here, 5 5 3, 3 2, 2, 1, 1. Mercury. And he has a chance for that individual sweep, working on two wins so far and looking good in this third race. Through the S's, tied with the Lotus, down the double spiral. He's in the far line on the near side. Has a few lengths lead, Lotus trying to keep in the race and he just cannot, he doesn't have the speed and the Mercury will put on another win. McLaren again, right at the heels of the Lotus as they cross and it's the same type of finish. We've changed lanes thrice and it's still the same results. I don't know if we've seen uh, yet a, uh, a set of heats end where every car is placed the same exact place every single time. It's very possible this time. Mercury, here we go, on the far side, through the S's, looking for his fourth win to push to the finals. Lotus, trying to do something about it. Here we go, the Mercury, still holding that lead. Red Nissan, almost messing up, maybe, the leaderboard, and who will come out? The Nissan. Camera cut away from them to look at the uh, cars in front, and it was, it was a suspenseful moment, but it won't end in that consistent order. Uh, unfortunately, well, I, I guess... I guess either way, it wasn't really good for either of those two cars, but I would have liked to have seen the 4-1s and the 4-2s straight across the board. Don't want to say too unfortunate, though, because I'm sure the Nissan is happy to not get last place four times in a row. Next set of four, Mercedes, Challenger, Viper, and the Connie Say. Connie Say looks to be faster on the far side. Also, the Challenger putting up quite the challenge here on the near side. Let's move forward here. We got the Connie Seg on the far side. Big lead, oh, he skids down and loses control. The challenger bumps him across and almost loses out there to the Viper and twists and weaves to the inside. And there's been time now for uh, respective vehicles to observe how this track goes. We had two days already passed, and so all of these cars should be very familiar with the progression of this course. They've seen the mistakes, they've seen the successes, and they should be able to play off that here in this one. And it looks like the cars are pretty uh, agile out there, not a lot of trouble in the convergent space so far in this one. Pretty fast vehicles coming out as well. Here we go, the Connie Sagan on the near side. Down by a wheel length, now up by a wheel length. Okay, Converge Challenger can't find the gap. And he'll cross. Backwards, here comes the Mercedes who cruises across. Mercedes went for a spin there. And it's just not, not looking good today. Who has a chance for second? Connie sagged with two fives. And uh, we, we have a chance again for that consistent cross-the-board finish. I don't even know how to name it. All the cars finish in the same place every time. That's really the most, uh, the most concise name I can come up with it at the moment. We have a chance again for that. Connie Seg looking for a five again. Who's right behind but the Challenger? Here comes the Viper looking for uh, third place again. Mercedes, look at the Challenger. Oh, big collision, but he loses the momentum and loses the battle. And Mercedes, uh, well... I mean, I don't even know how that's possible. Let's maybe get a replay. How did he end up on the... Man, he just really hit off hard through that transition piece. Same places, thrice in a row. Heat four. To finish in a consistent beauty. Connie Say on the far side of the near lane. And the challenger pushing ahead. Right behind. Same type of stratification. Mercedes lagging behind, then Viper, then Challenger, then Connie Seggy. He's got to stay straight here. Challenger with some speed, but no dice. He won't have the speed to get. Oh, the Mercedes is going to break the trend and will get close twice to finishing in the same order. And the Viper spins out and has no speed at the end. What a pass at the end. 
Oh my god. It really, it really is not to be today. 1112 and 2221. And they won't be advancing either, but it really ended the same way as it did in the first heat. I mean, the first set. And unfortunately, I would love to see the, uh, the consistency across the board. Here we go, finals. We have the Mercury, and we have the Connie Sag. Two cars to look out for. Lotus and Challenge are not necessarily out of it, but they'll have some work to do here. Who's going to come out strong in the first one? Mercury fast through the transition out of the double spiral. Spins out for a second, gains control, and the Lotus will pull up behind Challenger and Connie Sag. Uh, first time the Challenger was able to best the Connie Sag, and really at the right time. Finals is where you want to do it. Mercury. He's three away from an individual sweep. A full sweep. A group stage sweep. Heat two. Eyes on the Mercury. Far lane, far side. To the S's he goes. Weaves through them. Connie Seg with some speed, but losing it. Not far behind. Challenger working with it. Mercury, oh, not as fast as time out of the piece. Only down a couple lengths. Here to the transition piece. Oh, bounces through it. Connie Seg speeding on the near side and spins. He'll get three points. But the Mercury will pick up his second five and really be in a threat position to take it all right here. If Mercury wins again, it's over. And then it'll just be a matter of, uh... Well, that final chance for individual sweep. Mercury on the near side. Looking for another five. This will be the seventh one of the day. Mercury. Ooh, down for a second by a wheel length. He looks to be back in the lead. Connie Seg trying to stay in it. And he, well, he falls behind and the Mercury streaks to another win. That's seven. Seven fives today. A good battle there between the Connie Seg and the Lotus. The Lotus had a good uh, initial block out of the transition, and it was easy from there. Mercury. Looking for eight. Looking for an individual sweep. He will advance no matter what can he sweep. On the near side in the far lane. Through the S's they go. Back and forth, rattles through them. Still a lead, double spiral. Will any car challenge the Mercury? Any car do anything about the sweep? It does not look like it unless the Mercury hurts himself and he will not. Connie Seg, not enough time. Challenger, Lotus bringing up the rear. Mercury, eight wins in a row. Full individual sweep. Definitely a car to reckon with come the finals. He will be heading straight there. Congratulations to him. Check out Diecast Racing TV for the parallel tournament and races and fun each week as we continue through this double. day four here of the double spin tournament and I'm starting to realize that a lot of the speed loss these cars suffer comes from the S's. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan and we're already getting started here. Jaguar, Mazda, Mustang, and Corvette to kick things off and look as they come into the S's, all the lateral motion and the dead end of the speed and you start to realize that, well, a lot of that speed loss happens when cars come up on two wheels as they weave back and forth sideways. Here comes the Mustang, big and strong, and Mazda right behind. And that will be a 5-3, respectively. And start to look at those S's, because if cars start to raise up vertically, then that's going to be a major speed loss. Try to keep all four wheels on the ground when possible. But it's hard to do when the track is pushing you so... Uh, violently back and forth through the S's. Here we go, next set of heats. Well, next heat here, Mustang five, Mazda three. Mustang on the far side looking with a lead. Down the spirals they go and Mustang falls behind. Few lengths, uh, has some work to do. It looks like the Mazda has an open straight here, converges, stays straight. Oh, the Mustang is so fast to the end. 
He's not gonna get it. He's gonna ram up behind the Mazda and not see an open line on the near side. But wow, what acceleration out of the conversion space. Mazda, Mustang, and we're five and three. Tied up at eight, both of them. Two and one, one and two for the Corvette and the Jaguar. And they're tied up as well, though not in the way they would like to be. Through the S's, slower as they go. Looks like the Mustang has a lead this time. Through the spirals, here he comes. Down the near side, looks like the Jaguar has something to say about it. Into the convergent zone, Mazda, Mustang fast again on the far side, but nothing happening. Mazda cuts for the block. Can't get around the uh, Jaguar there who, I mean, again, the Mazda made a good look for it, actually pushed to the outside, tried to find the draft lane and use the speed, but the Jaguar was too fast and the track was too short. Jaguar, Mazda, Mustang, and Corvette once again. Here we go, rolling out last heat. It's, uh, well, it's anyone's game except the Corvette, really. Jaguar still in it if he can win this one. Looks like he's falling behind, though. Mustang as well falling behind, looking at the Mazda right now. Jaguar, maybe if he can get second place, something will happen there. Oh, the Mazda spins out. He's still in the lead. Pushed forward by the Jaguar, but the Jaguar is cut out of second place as the Mustang very wisely nudges the Corvette across, knowing that any of those points won't matter. Uh, Jaguar... Wow, actually, Jaguar would have won if Mustang didn't do that, or at least tied, sending that to a tiebreaker round. Did you see that? Mustang only one point up on Jaguar right there, so that was an excellent move to push Corvette across and dock Jaguar that one point, keeping him out of the finals. Here they go. PBS is once again. Mustang, McLaren, Shelby, Rampage. New set of four. Who are we going to get on the near side? Oh, Mustang rattles out of the turns. Not good look. Shelby down. Big lead. And the Mustang, he skids sideways for a minute. Uh, he has speed, but he's not using it right. It is such wisdom on the track to be able to know the score and know which cars need to finish where in order for best case scenario scenario for yourself. You don't want to go to a tiebreaker if you don't have to. Again, I'm really impressed by the Mustang in the previous uh, group. Mustang in this group, looking pretty good, starting with a three. What about the Rampage? Looking fast, but slow through those S's. I think that pickup truck shape, not good for S-shaped racing. Here we go. On the far side there, the Shelby and the McLaren, who's fast down into the convergence zone. Slides for a second and leaves room for the Shelby to take it over. He will, by length, on the near side. Left a lane open and open space was used. Shelby with two fives and McLaren is not happy. What a wonderful heads up play from the Shelby. Saw the open space, knew there might have been some trouble because of that uh, skidding that was going on. A lot of trouble McLaren had transitioning into the final piece. And uh, well, took advantage of it well. Mustang on the far side. Here we go, Shelby on the near side and looking towards the end and the McLaren just cannot get his wheel straight. Three points. Shelby with five, McLaren with three, then two, one. Man, he just has trouble straightening out. He needs that guardrail on either side to stay straight and fast. That's not good. Honestly, my money's on the Shelby here, of course, who, well, who's all but wrapped it up. He's on his way to an individual sweep in the group stage. But I think the Mustang has a better chance. Here we go, Mustang looking slow through the S's, but has a chance coming out through the double spiral. Starting to speed up here, Mustang very fast through the transition piece, but rattles out of it and needs some space. McLaren down, another chance for five, and skids back and forth, but way faster than the Shelby. And there will be no individual sweeping of any kind in this one. Shelby moving on, of course. McLaren hanging on. If he can straighten out those wheels, things could look good. Finals. Mazda, McLaren, Mustang, Shelby. Here we go. Mazda, McLaren, Mustang, Shelby. Once again, on the far side there, the Shelby and the Mustang on the near side, McLaren and the Mazda. Mazda looking the slowest of the bunch into the double spiral. Here they go, speeding up the Mazda. He's got a shot at first place. McLaren holding on. Will he be straight into the final space? He will not. He will skid again, but somehow stay in front. Good block. And McLaren, knowing his own weaknesses, got out in front early and used that uh, fishtailing motion as a general block. Shelby really struggled there, ended up backwards. And uh, starting not as expected, 
McLaren with five. Sometimes the wildest of racers end up being the most productive. Mustang on the far side, Shelby on the near. In the middle there, the Mazda and the McLaren. Into the double spiral. Who's really the leader here through the double spiral? Looks like the Shelby coming out the McLaren, holding neck and neck through the conversion space they go. Who's going to come out on top? And it's the Shelby! Fast! And it will be easy! The Mazda will pass the McLaren as well. And it's not getting any easier for the McLaren. Five and two now. Let's look ahead. Heat three. Now they've changed lanes once again. It's the Shelby here on the inside line um, of this inside track here. And the Mustang, of course, closest to us here. Down the turns they go. Who's going to come out? Leader Mazda looking faster than the McLaren. He might have a good time in the transition zone. Yes, spinning. And the McLaren's faster. Stay straight for the first time. And he will get another five. And that will change things here going into the finals. Mustang seems to be out of it at this point. 525, that's 12. Mazda hanging on with 9. And I will say, uh, same with the Shelby, who needs to win and the McLaren lose for there to be a tiebreaker. Mazda really needs the McLaren to do bad as well and also needs to win here. Looking at the far side. They're looking fast, but Mustang needs to get out in front. Mazda's falling behind. Shelby will have no chance. Even with the win here, he spins around. And the McLaren still wins the race. He probably spun knowing his chances were dashed anyway. And just, uh, I don't know, out of frustration, uh, pulled a very silly maneuver. And the McLaren, unexpected after the first couple races where he was shaky, will take this one pretty easily. Three fives in the finals. And that'll wrap it. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Four of the eight we know who are advancing to these finals. And we'll see you next time on Races and Fun. Day five of the double spin tournament and cars should be prepared at this point. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan. Day five means that four days have gone by and uh, four different instances for cars racing today to observe, to practice, to learn from those guinea pigs. And we'll see if they have taken any useful information from those times. So we got a first set of four, Bone Shaker, Pagani, Nissan, and Porsche. Yeah, the Bone Shaker sticks out like a sore thumb here on the near side. Looks like the Nissan there is taking a lead in the inner line of the outer line. <laughs> inner line of the outside, here they go, down towards the transition and through, and big win for the Nissan. Pagani brings it up quite slow. Beautiful mint green car though. I'm taken aback by its presentation. Five for the Nissan, who started very strong. Portion there as well, picking up two in the first one. Bone Shaker, and that vehicle looks quite odd, I will say. I don't know how aerodynamic it really is, but uh, seems to be holding his own quite well. Struggles into the outer line there, the first uh, spiral. Still a Nissan lead. Here comes the Porsche. Maybe to say something about it. Outside line acceleration. Cut off Porsche. Dove back inside, but just didn't have enough time. That was a smart move. Not often do we see cars make two choices like that. But uh, just not enough time to catch up. Porsche smart racing brings him three. Nissan with a chance to secure his spot. Here in the finals. If he wins this one. Here we go. Nissan on the near side. Porsche just behind. Through the S's they go. Porsche catching up. And to the outside turn, Porsche loses it. Nissan still holding the lead by a length. Bone Shaker in there as well. It's going to be a mess in the transition zone. Nissan. Collision between the Porsche and the Bone Shaker. And the Porsche can't stay outside. He needed to get around Nissan. And he just nudges him away. 
Look at that, the nudge right there. Bone Shaker falls back the third once again. Pagani, nothing but ones, an individual failure about to present itself here. Heat four. Five, five, five for the Nissan. If he wins this one, he's uh, halfway to a individual sweep. Nissan fast to the essence. Porsche trying to hold his own. Looking like it will be close out of the turns. Porsche still can't edge a lead. Down by a couple wheel lengths. Here's the transition. Porsche goes in and out. He's behind the Nissan. The Nissan stays in front. Good cutoff move. Started to zig back towards the inside. And then right again moves away. And it causes some confusion that Porsche is unable to deal with. Porsche will be in the finals, but uh, many points down on the Nissan. Second group, Challenger, Charger, Mustang, and Lamborghini. Who will stand against the Nissan in the finals? I'd like to see more from Porsche, though. I feel like there's some potential there. Just uh, maybe a set of unlucky races. Here we go, through the S's. Challenger on the near side. Through the spirals they go. And it looks like the Charger is falling behind. Mustang, big lead. Lamborghini. Oh, Mustang skids for a second, finds his footing, and he'll stay ahead of the Challenger. Looks like Mustang had trouble transitioning, converging, but uh, nothing that lasted too long. Heat two. Mustang a bright purple. Racing stripes down the side. Two bright ones on the middle. Really sticks out. Beautiful vehicle. Lamborghini near side, a bright red as well. Wonderful car choices for today's group. Mustang on the far side, looking fast. Here comes the Charger, maybe in the convergence zone. Mustang still holds the lead, couple links down. Lamborghini, no, nothing. Everything stays in short order. Clean convergent zones today. Maybe one collision in the previous uh, group, and that's about it. People, cars have been staying off each other. And we have Mustang with two fives. To heat three. There we go. Mustang, near side. Turns on the inside. And he's stretching out by a few lengths. And it looks like no car in the vicinity, though they're all going to converge all and hit each other. Charger push forward. Mustang stops, and they're spinning a nose block all together. Mustang might have even given himself the advantage by skidding for a second because Charger, who tried to find outside, could not get there. Wow, I don't know what happened there, but it all came apart. I'm wondering also if, uh, if you get two fives, bear with me on this one, if you get two fives, if you are secured for an advancement to the finals at that point. I'm, I'm trying to think that through as I bring you guys well, the play-by-play -play here. Here comes the Mustang on the near side. Mustang out by a few lengths. Looks like the Lamborghini's got some speed. Down to the conversion zone. Mustang skids again. Lamborghini fast on the near side, and he won't pass. Charger does a reverse nose back breeder block. Skids all over the place, and he ends up... I think he'll advance, too, but he ends up there in third. Who will advance? Oh, tiebreaker coming up here. Challenger and the Lamborghini, 9-9. Nine and nine. Mustang individual sweep. Nissan and Mustang will battle out soon for the individual sweetness opportunity. Challenger and Lamborghini for the tiebreaker, even through the S's. Here they go. Down towards the finish line they run. Lamborghini with a lead for a second. Here comes back to a charger. Now the Lamborghini fast out of the double spin. Here's the convergence zone. He skids and bumps, but Charger's not fast enough. No, he's not. And Lamborghini will advance. Nice turn of events. Charger looked better out of the start. Five and five, if you get two fives and then follow it by two ones, the least amount of points you can get with two fives is 12. I don't think with if two other cars win either race, that's five and five, and then say they both get a three, that's an eight, and then maybe they both pick up a two. Oh, and if they swap a three and a two, no, you know what, no. It, I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it'd be possible. Let's see, Mustang here in the finals. Left behind is the Nissan, who will get maybe one point, maybe two points, maybe three. No, two. Mustang taking five, though. He was the only one keeping that individual sweep, sweep alive. It's five, three. So 
a 5-3-2-3 two, would be 13 points. A 5-3-2-2 uh, two, two would be 12 points. So the best that could happen if a car gets two fives is they would tie for second and have to go to a tiebreaker. So two fives guarantees you a really good shot at advancing to the finals. Do you manage to get it? Just based on what other cars might be able to do. Mustang spins out of control. Lamborghini, but Mustang holds on. I feel like someone needs to kind of type out that math in the comments. I'm just kind of spitballing it, but um, I mean, it, it, it falls to form. Let's run it again. Heat three. Mustang, two five still. The win is not guaranteed yet. If he wins this one, it is. Mustang on the far side to clinch the win. Nissan, who was fast in his first group, nowhere to be found. Charger, I um, mean, sorry, a portion, uh, Lamborghini kind of in there. Oh, the Mustang falling behind. Things may switch up. Mustang in third and not even in second. And the individual sweep falls short in the seventh race. And Lamborghini has a chance. Going from barely qualifying for the finals up here with a chance to take it. Needs to beat a Mustang here. Mustang 552. That's 12. Lamborghini 5. 3-3, three, three. that is 11 points. Lamborghini must finish ahead of Mustang in this race to push to tiebreaker or the win. Mustang by a few lengths. Lamborghini, fast behind, three lengths behind. Here's the convergence zone, has Nissan to work with, and it's not gonna happen. Mustang will take it. Down one, shy of the individual sweep, but Mustang rolls to the finish, and he'll be heading to the grand finale. 17 points, nothing to sneeze out there, of course. Well done, Mustang, and we'll see him in the final video. Three more days to go as we fill out those spots. Five days have passed in this tournament, and not yet have we seen an individual sweep. Hey, everybody, I'm Brendan. If you remember last time, Mustang, that beautiful purple Mustang, took it all the way close to seven wins and fell shy of the eighth, getting third place. And really just a, a stroke of misfortune. I mean... Everything was going so well, and one race towards the end of the finals just went completely pear-shaped, and it all fell apart. So we're still searching for that individual sweep. No cars arose as being that uh, well endeared with skill quite yet. Here comes the glory chaser chasing first place. Good start. And we got our new set of four here, another set of four to follow, and then down to the finals here in day six as we find our next finalist. Three more spots remain. Conisag, McLaren, Shelby, Glory Chaser all on the table to, well, compete for one of them in today's tournament day, tournament group stage. And we'll have four more cars again later to compete with them. Glory Chaser, this time behind. Small car, I will say, compared to the rest of them. Here comes the Shelby, fast and furious. Conisag, nearing on the outside and gets it by a wheel length. Edges out the Glory Chaser, a foot race. That is a really impressive battle we just witnessed. And that evens a lot of things up. Three and three for the Conisag. Shelby and Glory Chaser tied at seven. McLaren being the only one really not looking good, unless he can win the next two. But again, like we said last time, if you manage to win two races, you are guaranteed a win or at least a chance at a tiebreaker in a very specific situation. Otherwise, it's going to be tough. Glory Chaser, big, fortunate spin through the transition piece, and he's going to grab first place. He came out of there, spun around, and got nudged well ahead 
McLaren going for that individual fail sweep, whatever you call it. I still don't have a wonderful name for that. And here we go. Glory Chaser with 12. Shelby with 9. Conaseg with 9. Glory Chaser is all but secured in this one. Connie Seg and Shelby to battle it out here. Connie Seg on the far side in the outer lane. Shelby on the near side in the inner lane. Connie Seg left behind and ooh, easy win for the Shelby. Picking up five. And he and the Glory Chaser will advance. And I think uh I think about tied in points though. I think I think the Shelby might be one down. Connie Seg just gave it up there. Yeah, 14 to 15. Let's get that second group going. Toyota, Audi, Triumph, and Porsche. Here we go. We get a first look at who might be fast in this one. On the near side, looks like the Toyota is quite fast. Not yet in first place, but ooh, through those S's look very strong. Also, the Porsche looking strong through the S's. On the far side, who comes out fast? The Triumph. Will he triumph? And he's roadblocking. Oh, nudge forward. The Toyota's in there as well. What happened with the Porsche? I don't know if that was a real purposeful roadblock, more of like a skid out of control. The Porsche spins him back to front, and Toyota, who is faster, just had no lane and no space to work with. Heat 2. Triumph. Up with a first place. On the near side, the Porsche and the Toyota. Porsche looking fast through the double spiral. This is where he really excels, and he's coming out. Oh, in the lead. He had it. And now he has a few lengths. Toyota fast through the braking piece. No. He's going to rattle down there. He was all over the place. Triumph. Nothing doing there as well. And we have ourselves a pretty even set. Heat three. We have a five and a two, a two and a five, and of course a three and a three. So we have a seven, seven, six situation. Audi, of course, now left behind as the slowest car so far. And it looks like, well, that's on its way to stay uh, pretty straight up. Triumph, ooh, almost leaves the track there. Porsche taking advantage. Big speed boost, and they all come together. Toyota left away Porsche with a nose block. Wow, that is the most uh, eventful convergence we've seen in a long time. All three of them together. Triumph came out to the least fortune of the deal. What a, what a job by Porsche to get out in front and block on Toyota, who is about to break away. Here we go. Still anyone's game except for the Audi. Porsche with 12. Rest of them with nine. Porsche, looking here. Triumph needs to beat out Toyota for the win, and they will come together. Oh, almost! Toyota almost pushed past on the far side. What a draft lane and a maneuver, but just not enough track length. Give it another track length, and you have a different result. Very exciting. Uh, straight across the board failure for Audi, by the way. I wish all three of these cars could be in the finals. After that racing with Toyota, ah, just unfortunate that he missed out. I mean, that was quite a skilled maneuver to draft in and right at the last second push away. He just didn't have enough time. Shelby, Glory Chaser on the near side, both of them looking fast. On the far side, of course, the two from the previous group. Triumph coming out fast this time, looking to win that first race. And near side, big block, road block, nose block, switching all around. And it looks like the Shelby is going to fall Short of first place, couldn't push through the Triumph, who seems like a smaller vehicle, but really held his ground there when he went sideways. Porsche will finish backwards and not too happy. Porsche. Take a look at him this time. On the near side. My eyes are on him. I think he's got some speed this time. Shelby edging out by a wheel length. Look through the S's, though. This is where Shelby has trouble as a bigger car. Stayed pretty straightforward, though. Here comes the Porsche. Fast and out. No rattles out. The Shelby taking a bleed on him. And it looks like the Glory Chaser is going to scramble through here. Shelby speeds up, but just has no time. And I think the Porsche might have, well, fell in last place there again. I thought, I thought the Porsche might have had something in the tank there, but he, he would need a win to here. Looking at Porsche. 
wondering for a win. Glory Chaser on the far side, looking fast out the gate, along with the Shelby. Porsche maybe with a glimmer of hope here, looking pretty fast. Inside line comes out, Triumph having trouble. Shelby also not looking as fast. Here comes the Porsche, big body block, nose block on the Glory Chaser, and he holds both of them back. Amazing strength, holds two cars back to grab three points, and he's not completely dead in the water yet, I don't think. Maybe he is. Five. Five points to Porsche name. Who else? Five, two, one, eight. No, technically not. Uh, no, he is. Yes, Shelby with five, three, three is going to have 11 points, making it impossible for the Porsche, but not impossible for the Glory Chaser or the Triumph. Looking the best to Shelby here. They need a big uh, lead on him. Porsche providing that gap in between the Glory Chaser. And that's a win. That is a win. And heading to the grand finale. Shelby could not find his way past either of those vehicles. It was a big block there. And the Glory Chaser will go up two in the finals. And take it. Two more spots to fill. Not yet an individual sweep. We'll look out for it. What a race today. So many cars battling. Oh, what are even like? Six spaces filled and two to fill yet. Hey, everybody. I'm Brendan. Let's get right to it. Day seven here at the Double Spin Tournament. And we look over our contestants here as they head up to the blocks. Four and four, as usual. Cutting it down to four for the finals, and then one will move on. No individual sweeps yes, yet in this tournament. We are awaiting that distinction if any car is up for it. And so far, a pretty exciting tournament, if I do say so myself. Especially that last video with a lot of action down there in this convergence bait as we see Audi take to it first and run across the line for a win. A lot of strategy in there. You really want to avoid contact if you can. I mean, as much as we love to see contact, contact... From the perspective of a racer, not good. That can throw you off your game. Speed dock, control dock as well, and then you're left spinning around and, well, sometimes all the way back in third place. Here we go. Looks like Audi takes a lead here, but uh, doesn't seem to be as fast in this one. Audi down by a length behind BMW, coming into the space, and ooh, gets a little nose clip on Bugatti, who almost rushes to the finish, but BMW cuts him off. A good move at the end there to ensure a win. Saw that Audi was a little bit further down and made the right block. 2-5-5-2 tied there between Bugatti and... Uh, sorry, BMW and Audi. Audi on the near side, BMW the very far side. Cars in the middle here, still with a shot, but it looks like Porsche is, is doing a, a double one, so... This could be hard for him to fight his way out. Still slow in this one. BMW just edging out Bugatti into the convergence space. They spin around and lose all control. Porsche might even grab second. He does. And what was I just talking about, right? Have to be controlled. Avoid contact in the convergence space. Exciting for our eyes, but not for Bugatti. Uh, or BMW, who, well, lost out on a bunch of points because of it. Now it's going to be hard for either, either of these cars to uh, grab second place. It's not clear-cut quite yet. Audi looks like he has in the clear with first place here. Down he goes. Audi, ooh, looks like the Bugatti has the win, and he's shoved so fast forward, there's no way he would lose that one. And I believe that's enough to give him the advancement. We have to see the points total there because it looks like BMW might have grabbed second and they're going to need a tiebreaker. Because he grabbed second, actually, uh, we missed out on that excitement, but the, the race for second was so close and BMW 
by a uh, nose pushed his way to the sidebreaker. Bugatti and BMW through the S's they go. They're tied in points. They look to be tied on the race so far, neck and neck as we head down towards the space on the inner and outer lines. Here we go, will there be collision? Yes, Bugatti gets in front though, bounces in front and all the momentum is transferred. And it looks like Bugatti is gonna come out the benefit of this tiebreaker. He will advance along with the Audi and we'll get our next four up there. Second group, Tesla, Lamborghini, Nissan, and uh, Camaro. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I do. I do. It's Camaro or Camaro or... I, I know, and people tell me in the comments, they sound it out using the phonetics and everything, and, and I, when it comes race day, I just forget once again. What about the, uh, the Lamborghini, though? Let's take a look at him. Looks to be speeding up there. Oh, back and forth, loses out, and looks like the Nissan's going to start strong here. And I know there'll be some comments on this one with all the phonetics and the explanations you could gather on this. Camaro? Camaro? Heat 2. Tesla starting out pretty slow, though. Do we expect any different, huh? Camaro on the near side. Nissan on the far. Lamborghini in there as well. Through the S's. Looks like Tesla has something to say about it as well. He might come out in second place here. Speed-wise, no. Lamborghini getting the edge. Here to the convergence space. Yes, looks like Camaro. Camaro? I don't Stop. Um, <laughs> I got to stay focused here, guys. <laughs> uh, three, five, three and five for the, for the Camaro. I'm afraid to say it, for the number 17. Oh boy. I'm giving myself a breakdown here. Number 17, blue stripe, uh, blue car, white stripes down the center. Uh, really holding out pretty well. Five and three for him. Looks like the Nissan and the Lamborghini still in it. Nissan on the near side, right on the 17. Oh, behind him, and they're all in a line. Tesla's gonna have a win! Nose block put on at the end. A very slight one, but enough to run him another length and push him across the finish line out of nowhere, and the standings are shook. Camaro, I believe, is gonna have a win here. He's 11 points. He's gonna advance. Uh, what about Tesla, though, with a chance? Yes, yeah, seven points for Tesla, nine for Nissan, and seven for, uh, no, six for Lamborghini. So there's an option for any car to make it here. Camaro taking a big lead at number 17. Tesla still doing some work here, comes out fast through the transition space. Big nose block holding on to the Lamborghini, even with two cars he holds on. Gets out in front, strong defensive maneuver, and doesn't even let two cars of force batter through it. And the Tesla comes back, one, one, five, three. Tie breaker is going to be in order. 10 to 10. Number 17 will advance, Nissan and Tesla to go at it. Tesla, who's been in a rhythm here, this could be good, the Nissan though, when you take him to straight racing, he is quite a fast vehicle. They're about even, but Nissan's out in front. Here they go to the Convergent. Tesla needs to get in front. He just bounds through, and he loses all that momentum. The mojo is gone, and Nissan says, I am here to win. Now, would have thought an upset could have occurred here, but not so. Uh, number 17, and the Nissan will advance. Finals. Let's do it. Heat one of the finals. We have our number 17 blue vehicle. We have our Bugatti, we have our Nissan, and we have our Audi. On the far side from the first group. On the near side from the second group. Nissan falling back quite a bit here. Audi, ooh, speed out of the turns, but it looks like that dark blue 17 is your commanding leader here in this one. I really, I really think it's very possible that we might uh, experience the final sweep. Audi stuck there on the track. He kind of got sidelonged through the transition. And we'll, uh, we'll run him again. The 17. Starting strong. Camaro, Camaro, stop. <laughs> the se <laughs> Audi on the near side. Through the S's they go. I gotta stop doing that. Audi. 
and the Nissan and Bugatti all about neck and neck and neck. Here comes the number 17 through the transition piece. He's got a big lead. The Nissan is pushed ahead on the near side, and he gets around in the draft lane. I think that was a move from Bugatti and Nissan Audi together, not necessarily purposeful, but Nissan got a huge speed boost, and he's back in. Back in it to win it. Bugatti and Audi, a lot of work to do down in their respective places. Bugatti with at least a three and a two, but Audi's just so far behind at this point. The number 17 and Nissan seem to be the two with the most likely chances. Number 17, out again. Nissan could use some speed here. He's again stuck behind. The 17, too fast through the transition. Ah, ooh, Nissan's trying to hold on for second and does. Keeps two cars back. And, I mean, I think that keeps him in the game. So that second place might have been important. We'll have to see the points here. 17 with 13 points. And the Nissan with 10. So the Nissan wins here. He'll get 15. And, uh, well, if the, uh, the number 17 avoids first or second place, it will go to a tiebreaker or even a win for the Nissan. Here we go, down the double spiral. And it looks like the Nissan... Oh, my God! The Camaro flew off the track, and it is over! Nissan just needs to win this one! He will not! A tiebreaker will have to happen! 13 points to 13 points! No, wait, will they give him one? Will they give him one even though we finish not? They might. I think they will because that's usually how it goes. And it looks like the Camaro will win. Camaro will win this one. Man, by falling off the track just because Nissan didn't win the race, it will be a number 17 victory. He will advance and I think he deserved it. After the last video, I noticed some comments posing some intriguing thoughts, wondering if cars who tend not to finish the race maybe should receive no points at all. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and I promise you that uh, we at Races and Fun will confer on this matter and maybe make a change. We'll see. Day 8! in the double spin tournament as we get our first four going. Corvette, Nissan, Ford, and Jaguar being our four to start here. And uh, one spot remains. One spot remains here in uh, the finals eight. And we'll see who takes it. Big finish from Corvette, by the way, as we get going. Uh, just speeds right to the end. Acceleration on the far side. And what a wonderful foot race to the end. Nice pass, and we're starting strong. get our next heat going. There we are. So Corvette leads the pack right now with five. Nissan, Ford, Jaguar filling in. Ford right behind and just lost out after having the lead to the final second. And now we'll get to see them come out again. Looks like Ford has the lead once again. Corvette with some acceleration on the near side. This time, oh, slides in and a big nose block at the end. Who's going to pass on the far? No. Looks like the Jaguar couldn't pass the Corvette. Spun him around even more, but he might have taken second on the push. Yes, I think he did. Yeah, he did. Three. That was quite interesting type of finish. And it looks like the action will be packed here. A lot of collision, and Corvette seems to speed up in the second sector after they come out of that double spiral. And Ford, who seems to again come out with a lead, loses it quickly. This time, looks like neck and neck. Corvette, oh, on the near side, but shoves Ford way far ahead. Who got the better jump out of the collision. And that will be five for the Ford. And, well, there goes an individual sweep chance. Run them again. 
This is it for the advancement. Looks like Ford and Corvette will be the two to advance. Jaguar still with a chance, though. He's got six points. Ford has ten. It could push to a tiebreaker with the right type of finish. But Ford being so far in front already, probably that situation won't occur. He starts to slide. He goes for a full roadblock, and the Corvette will pass on the near side and cut him off at the end as well. It almost came apart there for the Ford, but uh, there was no effort there from the Jaguar to make things up. In fact, both of those cars, they're completely stopped, and we have a clear advancing two. Nissan didn't even get, well, his wheels much off the ground. And by that, I mean a lot of last place. Heat one of the second group. Comments pointed me towards the pronunciation Camaro, and that we will try to do. If I'm wrong somehow again, uh, don't hesitate to point it out. But we'll go Camaro this time. Lamborghini, Conaseg, Mustang, way in the back there. Looks like the Camaro. Yes, and he can hold off there. I believe that's the Lamborghini who tried to nudge behind and actually did make contact but made no move to the near side open lane. That's a mistake. And honestly, the car's... Uh, that really stand out are the ones that can uh, see the open space, speed up when they need to, and actually make the move. Lamborghini just couldn't get there. Lamborghini, though, coming out the fastest of the bunch. Looks like Camaro will also... Oh, Camaro. Man, I really just... I, I'm a, it's a, I hate that word. <laughs> um, we'll, do, we'll just... We'll just hope Lamborghini wins this. Oh my god, they're all a roadblock and a spin and just a single file line to the end. Man. I think that's a response to my lack of ability to pronounce. We're gonna get it. We're gonna build that muscle memory. <laughs> All the cars kind of stopped racing there for a second. It looked like heat three. Let's let's re let's recollect ourselves. Camaro five and three. Lamborghini five and three as well. So we have eight eight. We have four in the Koenigsegg, who's still in it, and Mustang's probably out of it with only two ones. Koenigsegg, super, super slow in the double spiral. Looks like it's a foot race between the two ones again. Camaro, Lamborghini, oh, bounces out. He's all over the place. Even the Koenigsegg could catch up. No, a good cutoff. And there will be some nose-to-rear contact. Mustang will come just shy of the finish line, too, getting the spoiler over the line and nothing more. Look at him, right there, and just doesn't have it. <laughs> three ones. Um, I will say, most of the time when we get a three-one situation, the car manages not to get last once again. I know there's probably been a couple uh, individual opposite sweeps, or whatever you want to call them. If someone gave me a term, I forgot it. Um, but they're rarer than you think, so we'll see if the Mustang can dig his way out of it either. Looks like the Lamborghini and the Camaro once again. Mustang still falling back in the last. Camaro, Lamborghini, big collision, and Lamborghini stopped, but he's nuts around, and the Conestag, and the Mustang gets second. And as I say that, no individual failure sweep, whatever you call it, and just an absolute mess of metal out there. And the Camaro goes from first all the way to last, and uh, only picks up 14 points there. He could have had a chunky 19. Or uh, 18. We are to the finals. The two advancing, as you'd expect. And let's roll them out there. Lamborghini on the near side. Ford on the far side. Corvette and Camaro in the center. Looks like Camaro is the fastest through sector one. Into the turns they go. Lamborghini coming out pretty fast. Camaro holding the lead. Corvette with some acceleration as usual. Oh, and it's a bounce through the transition from the Ford. And Corvette turns. He knows blocks and holds on. I don't even think he needed to do that. The choices of some of these vehicles, though, happen so quickly and with such anticipation that sometimes uh, what seems like an unnecessary move in their mind was absolutely vital. Either way, the roadblock worked and Corvette starts out in the lead. Camaro only with two points. Ford, three. Lamborghini, just one. And he's going to struggle here if he can't get the speed up in sector one. He's falling behind once again. Ford on the near side with some acceleration. Camaro can't keep up as well. Corvette bounces through. Camaro's down and sliding all around, and he's not going to get there. Anything past two. Corvette will slide now with second, and just because of that swap of places, the Camaro is still involved in a possible uh, victory. Ford, I think, is out of it at this point. 
Eyes on Camaro here. Needs to do well in this one to hang on. The other two, well, looking pretty good. Lamborghini's out of it. Three DS as they go. Double spiral. He's got to be fast here. He's got to come out with acceleration. He doesn't. Wheels get stuck on the rail. He's left way behind the Ford and the Corvette. And there's a pass at the end, too. And Corvette will have the advantage into the last race. Camaro, Lamborghini. And it looks like group two of this video wasn't as strong. Look at that Corvette. Bright blue, red and white stripes, uh, white circular, uh, circular decal there. Hood is open here in the front. I don't even know if that's good for aerodynamics, but it's the choice they've made. Doesn't seem to matter. There are tons of acceleration coming out of this turn on the near side. And Ford dives into the lead, and it looks like a tiebreaker will be in order. 5-3, 5-3 for both of them. Man, look at them come out of the transition, just smashing the wall on either side, synchronized and crossed up, 16 to 16. Corvette and Ford, evenly matched. It's sad to see either of them go at the end of this, but only one can win. Near side Corvette, far side Ford, inner lines, both of them, S as they go. Into the double spiral, they'll take to the same type of turn progression. On the near side, the Corvette, falling behind by a length. Does he have acceleration to the transition? He does. On the far side, no. He wiggles and waggles and has no chance of catching up. And Ford will advance. Winner by tiebreaker, the number four Ford. Bright white with red and blue stripes. Whoa. After the incident in video 7, the fans spoke and we at Races and Fun responded. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan and I'm happy to tell you that we have made a slight change in our points ruling and cars who do not finish the race will receive zero total points. That might shake up things a little bit more than usually they are, so look out for that and certainly would have an effect on probably some of the past tournaments, but uh, you know the change is implemented now. We are in the finals. These are the top eight from the past eight videos, and who's gonna take the first one? Looks like the Mercury, even the Lucid Air in there on the far side. And we'll start with a Mercury 5. All of these cars, of course, very well bested their respective groups. I remember them. Remember the Mustang, that purple Mustang? Think back in videos one or two. And they're all ready. I'm gonna put their best wheel forward here in the finals. And hopefully there'll be no zeros today. On the near side, the Mustang. Down the double spiral, looks like the Lucid Air having trouble keeping up. Oh, Mustang! Grinds on the rail there for a second. He'll lose some speed. Looks like the Aston Martin and the Mercury on the near side. He's got the win. Big push at the end. He has it by a nose. Acceleration finds a line. This is what we see from elite racers. Two fives for the Mercury. You won't see that as often in the group stages. Not just speeding up, not just drafting, not just seeing an open line, but actually taking it and accelerating and at the last second, retaking the lead. Very high level racing. Exactly what we're expecting here in the finals. On the far side, the Aston Martin looking for a five losing speed. Lucid Air catching up. Mercury, big lead once again. The Mustang, a big block. He holds on. As he swerves to the outside, Lucid Air will come in in fourth this time, and things are looking pretty close for that second place battle. Looks like the Mercury is, uh, well, trying to do the unimaginable and maybe individually sweep the finals, and he wasn't able to do that in the group stage, so how much harder it might be today. But, uh, well, anything's possible. Look at the points. Two, two, three, most likely they're down at the bottom of the Mustang. 
uh, to win this one here with seven points, but also still in at the Aston Martin and the Lucid Air, depending on how the points shake out. Lucid Air on the near side, looking fast. If he gets past the Mercury, he's got a chance to take second, but no, it's a big roadblock. He holds on on top of the Lucid Air. I, I think... I, I don't know. I, I think I think the Mustang didn't fin No, I really think the Lucid Air or the Aston Martin might have had that. And the Aston Martin does buy one point. That three was enough. A well-timed nose block. I mean, you can't blame me for not being able to do all that math at once. But what I can do math on is the fact that the Mercury has four fives. So he'll be a watch-out point when we head to the finals of the finals. Here comes the Camaro on the near side. One by far in his group um, group stage and would have really taken if it wasn't for that way he fell off the course. Acceleration, there you go. There's a first win. Remember, he fell off the course there in that last race and he would have had probably another win, but uh, and that's ended up grabbing it by one point and that's why we've instituted the new DNF rule. But he's here, and truthfully, he deserves it. Still the fastest car in his group stage, even though under the current circumstances, there would have been a final tiebreaker. Near side here, the McLaren. Ford as well there on the very far side. Glory Chaser on the near side as well in that inner line. And Camaro, big lead coming out of the straightaway. Through the S's and the double spiral, it's still the Camaro. I mean, no one's there to challenge. He's got five and put up five more. Well done. And uh, the glory chaser is going to, well, not be doing any chasing back there. Chasing elves. <laughs> He's got a zero. There we go. Our first zero. The glory chaser gets that first zero for DNFing. How wonderful to see the implementation of new statutes. Camaro on the far side. Ford looking the best right now of the other three on the near side with two threes. Could use to win this one if he can. Oh, just bounces out there, but the Camaro has no speed. Glory Chaser from zero all the way to five. And that shakes things up quite a bit. It's now any vehicle's game and only the Mercury now with a chance for that individual sweep. Two zero five. That's seven. Ford with nine. McLaren there with four. And of course, the Camaro with that 13. I mean, he's all but good here. I mean, no, sorry, 12. 12 points. Pretty solid, though. It'd be hard for him to lose at this point unless there's some DNFs. Here we go. Camaro on the near side. And he comes out not faster than the Ford. The Ford's got a wheel or two, even a length on him. They roll through. Ford's all around backwards. Camaro knocked into them well and gets a wheel on him. Smart collision through that convergent space, and that's going to result in another win for Camaro. That's going to be enough to advance him. I think Ford's still advancing here, though, as well. 17 and 12. And uh, McLaren and Glory Chaser will have to retire themselves for now. Here's the finals. The four-car finals. Mercury. Don't forget him in lane four. Won the first four races of the day. Looking for that individual sweep. If he's fast through the S's and the turn, he's got a chance. Camaro looks faster. Through the spins they go. Mercury coming out with, ooh, rattles through. He's behind everybody. There goes the individual sweep as Ford races at light speed to the finish line. And we start pretty mixed up here. Ford and Aston Martin taking commanding leads. Our best racer, supposedly. Well, starts with one point. Heat two. On the near side now, the Mercury. Camaro in that third lane. Four, right next to Mercury here on the near side. Through the S's they go. Double spiral. And it looks like the Mercury, ooh, still struggling uh, to exit that double spiral. Does manage the outside line. He's got speed, but the Camaro's got a block on. And everything switches up almost completely. Ford in third, Aston Martin second. And it looks like things are, for the most part, evened out after this one. Camaro with two and five. Ford with uh, two and five, yet the other way around. 
Aston Martin, Mercury, share threes and ones respectively. It's still anyone's game. Mercury could use to be a little bit better out of the double spiral, though. It's been tough for him to keep those wheels down. How does he look here? Uh, a little smoother this time, but the Ford has the lead. Aston Martin, of course, some acceleration. Camaro is gone. Where's Camaro? Mercury, five points. Ford with three. Aston Martin may not even finish. And two zeros on the board here in race three. That is now the second time Camaro has flown off the course through that double spiral. I'm assuming that's what happened here. He looks to be in that same position, but this time he will not get the benefit of the one point. Neither will the Aston Martin who came just a couple inches out. Let's look at the standings. Camaro with seven points, Ford with 10. Mercury, I don't think he's out of it either, I believe with uh, nine points. Yes, nine points. Only the Aston Martin really probably out of it here. On the near side, the Camaro needs a win and needs everyone else to do not so good. If the Aston Martin gets second, there's a chance for the Camaro if he gets a win here. Aston Martin, acceleration. Mercury, even more acceleration. Needs to be a block here in the convergence space. Mercury um, puts on that block. No, it's nose to nose. And the Camaro. He will win, but it's not enough. Or it might be for a tiebreaker. A tiebreaker, 12 to 12, five points for the Camaro, three for the Mercury, and here we are at the tiebreaker, Ford, just down one with 11 points, so it's just these two, Camaro on the near side, Mercury the far, through the S's they go, rolling fast, it's about neck and neck, how will they exit the double spiral, looks good for neither car, slowed down, Camaro even slower, Mercury holding a lead, Camaro is faster, but not enough time to catch up, and the Mercury will run away with this one. Oh, wow. And just up short the Camaro because of that 1-0. And if he had had a 1 there, without the new rule, things could have been different. But unfortunately, not so. That will wrap things here for the double spiral tournament. With the change in rules came lots of opinions and even some questions. Hey, everybody. I'm Brendan and welcome to the channel finals, the two channel finals, Diecast Racing TV and Races and Fun. Of course, them taking their top four from each channel and pitting them together. Merrill will be in this first one time to redeem himself as he picked up, well, the last two videos he's been in, he's fallen off the course at least once. The yes is they go, double spin, and he'll stay on this time. We'll take you through this race and I'll address the question that I wanted to bring up at the beginning. Here comes the Zomboss, I believe. Wow. Zombot, sorry. Big acceleration at the end. Camaro holds on with uh, two points there with a nice nose block. But someone in the comments last episode said, well, what is a DNF? How do you know if a car is not crossed? What if a car is halfway across the line or stops right on that finish line? And of course, the answer is going to be... The whole car has to cross the whole line in order to receive points. Through the S's, Camaro falling behind, Zombot looking fast, acceleration, even with the Zombot after he rattled through the finish, and oh, Camaro is struck hard, and might DNF, yeah, yeah he will. Zombot, I think I had uh, second place there, Batmobile very fast this time. Yeah, whole car has to get across the line for points. Even if you get the first two wheels across and you kind of sit on the edge, you're going to pick up zero points. You really got to finish the race, okay? Really have to finish the race to pick up points. Camaro, eyes on him for sure as he was the favorite to win last time and came up just short and, well, would be excited to win this one. Looks like to be in the lead to the first sector. Here they go through the double spiral. Camaro out there in front. Zombot faster into the convergence space. Zombot struggles to stay straight and a big nose block. Who's gonna vie for the lead? And it's the Zombot followed by the Batmobile and the Camaro is in jeopardy to not move on. Oh no. Four points for the Camaro. Ford also with four. And even second place here being with uh, 11 points, Zombot up there in first with uh, 13. And indeed, the Camaro will not move on, so a much worse finish for him in this one than the last one. 
And the Ford has no chance either. It's really Zombot versus Batmobile, both of them to advance, and the Zombot's gonna be a problem in the finals. Camaro, <laughs> little backwards rear end, nose block, nose to nose, something going on. But uh, a lot of goose eggs. Two zeros as those cars face each other and almost uh, kiss out there on the track. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Just uh, a cute way to end their journey here in the tournament. You got to give them credit, though. Two cars who performed very well. Camaro came coming just short, even in the final tiebreaker, for taking the whole thing. Mercury, the favorite on the other side of things to win this one. He won the championship of the races in Fun Group, and now to pit him against the Diecast Racing TV Group. Well, we'll see. Looks like Diecast Racing TV faster this time as well. Batmobile Blue, nothing stopping him. Right behind Air Eruption, and Mercury looks slow compared to these two. And uh, I need not even mention the Aston Martin. But let's not count out Mercury quite yet. He's a fast car, and if he can uh, leave the double spiral a little bit smoother than usual, he's got a chance. I mean, look at the speed in the first sector. Big lead already by Mercury. Big jump through the S as they go. Down the double spiral. Mercury has to come out fast. He has to come out in control, and that he does this time. Even Batmobile can't catch up. They converge. He jumps through the space, and he's got the win. And that's a turnaround. Don't give up on the Mercury yet. Batmobile coming in second place. The eruption right behind Aston Martin. He's about out of it here. He would need to win two in a row here, and I just don't see it. Let's roll him again. Mercury with a chance. Eruption falling behind Mercury only with five points. Batmobile still in the lead with eight. Through the yeses they go once again. And double spiral, bad for Mercury, slots out a little sideways, he's behind, Aston Martin fighting for second place, can't get it, Mercury in the lead! Well, in the lead for second, Batmobile way out in front, but Mercury's putting himself in a good place to advance, Eruption could not get out of last, and uh, not looking good for the Eruption. If he wins this one and the Mercury really fails, things will kind of swap out. But uh, otherwise, it looks like Batmobile is going to have an advancement spot. Mercury, again, with 10 points. Eruption with 6. So it would have to be a big upset here in points into a tiebreaker if it's to change it all. Batmobile. Mercury falling behind. Eruption, though. As long as he doesn't win, Mercury's to advance. Third place for Mercury. Eruption fast to the end. He almost had it. I would say two lengths more, and he would have won. But even so, Mercury finishes third place. We'll move on with the Batmobile to the finals. And uh, we have three diecast racing TV cars. Zombot Batmobile Blue and Batmobile Chrome. And only one races in fun car. The Mercury goes to show you, you know, sometimes the fastest cars aren't necessarily on the, uh, the largest channel, however you want to say it. Mercury, near side, looks to be gaining some speed on Zombot. Where's the collision? Good collision. Nose block gets stuck right on the Batmobile. Though, I honestly, not the worst finish. The Batmobile Blue has been quite a problem in this one, and just getting in front of him might be good starting off here. Eyes on the Mercury because he is kind of the odd one out here. He's not a Batmobile, and he's not from Diecast Racing TV. He's also not a Zombot, but I mean, most people can claim that distinction. Most, car most things can claim that distinction. Mercury through the S's. Lost some control. Gaining back speed, hopefully, inside line. And he's slow. Slow out of the turns. Batmobile, all of them together. Tangled up. Mercury behind and no space. I mean, just no speed there. Zombot went for a big old roadblock, nose block, whatever. And, uh, well, he's going to have five points there. The five points are spread out. Mercury has to be fast here. He needs a win or at least a second place to keep the dream alive. Mercury, eyes on him on the far side near line. Taking a lead by a little bit by a nose, needs to be strong through the S's. Fast down the turns, he'll come out not looking good but accelerating. Maybe there'll be some tangle here in the convergence space. Oh my god, Zombot's almost sideways, Mercury grabs second. And maybe, just maybe, it's still possible. Who won that? 
Looks like the Batmobile and the Chrome did. Zombot struggles. Batmobile Chrome with 12 points. Mercury, unfortunately, only with 6. Too far down to take it, even if there's a DNF. I mean, does anyone have a chance? Zombot here with 8. So he's got a chance if he wins and the Batmobile Chrome either gets last or DNF. Let's see what happens. Here we go, Zombot on the near side, struggling to keep up even in second place. Chrome Batmobile just slides right to victory fast on the outside line. That's it. You gotta give it to him. You gotta give it to the cars that really pull up with the speed. Mercury did his best, but I mean, that's just some wonderful racing. 17 points, even in the finals of the finals of the channels of the finals. And that's gonna be the rest of this tournament. Double Spiral Tournament comes to an end. Batmobile Chrome the big winner. Subscribe and we'll see you next time as Races and Fun prepares for their next big ordeal. I will say, before I go though, this is a great time for you guys who watch so regularly to throw your ideas in the comments for the type of tournaments you might like to see. Whether it be straight racing, a different type of track, a different type of idea altogether, now is the time to propose as we continue to extend the creativity here on the channel. We appreciate you guys so much and we hope to see you in the next video.